Good afternoon. Today I'm going to talk about the nutritional aspects of water quality. The topics I'm going to cover today are water pH, alkalinity, and control of media pH. Salts. Then what I mean by salts are the salts that you'll find in the water. And then finally, the effect of irrigation water on plant nutrition. First, water pH, alkalinity, and control of media pH. A good way to start this off is what exactly is pH? With water, a small, small percentage of the water will break apart into hydrogen ions, that's H plus, and hydroxide ions, the OH minus. When we talk about pH, what we're measuring is the hydrogen ion concentration, H plus concentration, in the solution. Now, if you look at what the pH of materials dissolved in water are, they range from less than 1 to 14. 1 would be a very, very acidic solution, with 14 being a very basic solution. 7 is neutral. And if you look, uh, the range that you'll typically find in soilless media is a little bit smaller than that. It's usually around 4, 3.5 to 4 on the low side, to about 8.5 on the high side. So when you're talking about uh, pH in, in soilless media production, you're talking about a much smaller range than you're going to find the overall broad range that you're going to find in a water solution. Now, with water pH, there's three important factors. One is it's very easy to measure with a pH meter. Secondly, it, it affects the chemical solubility of fertilizers and fungicides and other things in the solution. For example, in the picture, you have two solutions that contain iron sulfate. The one on the left contains an, the iron sulfate at a low pH. If you notice, the solution's clear. You can see through it. You can see the black line behind it. And it's yellow. Now, the one on the right is the same iron sulfate solution, but the pH is high. And what's happened is the iron sulfate has precipitated out, and it's no longer available to the plant. So pH has a very big effect on solubility, but it has little effect on media pH. Water alkalinity, on the other hand, is different. <clears throat> water alkalinity, or acid neutralizing capacity, is the total amount of bases contained in the water. It cannot be measured with a pH meter, but it has a very large effect on media pH. Now, if you look at the graph, on the bottom we have the concentration of sulfuric acid added to a water, water sample. And on the, the left, um, we have water pH. You notice both waters start at the same pH. The green line would be a low alkalinity water. It requires very little acid to bring the pH down to four and a half. The red line, the one on the right, would require, even though it starts at the same pH, requires much, much more acid to take the pH down to 4.5. Now, the significance of pH 4.5, that's the point where you have zero alkalinity. So when you do an alkalinity test with a titration type test, what you're doing is you're bringing the, alkal the pH of the water down to 4.5. Okay, so the red line would be a high alkalinity water, and it requires much, much more acid to bring the pH down to 4.5. Now, alkalinity is made up of, of several things. Primarily, it's bicarbonates and carbonates. And these can be calcium bicarbonate, magnesium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate. In some rare cases, they're carbonates. So calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, sodium carbonate. But in general, you're talking about bicarbonate. Now, other ions that can affect the term alkalinity are hydroxide, phosphate, ammonium, silicate, all kinds of things. Generally speaking, you don't find those in water. What you're talking about when you're talking about alkalinity are bicarbonates. Now, bicarbonates and carbonates, alkalinity, react the same in the media as limestone. If you look at the reaction with limestone, you have calcium carbonate, CaCO3, plus an acidic peat, yields water, carbon dioxide, and a neutralized peat, the calcium peat. Okay. With calcium bicarbonate, it's the same type of reaction. You have a calcium bicarbonate interacting with the peat, giving you water, carbon dioxide, and the neutralized peat. It's the same reaction. And that's why when you use water with high alkalinity, the pH of the substrate tends to go up. 
what you're in fact doing is adding additional line to the media every time you water. Now, if you look around the country, alkalinities can range fairly broadly. For example, and this, this was a, uh, an experiment that was done in the early 90s where we looked at different, we looked, we looked at the, the alkalinity of different samples from different states. And what I have listed here are the 10 leading states in floriculture production at that time. So the alkalinity is generally, the average alkalinities of those states range from 220 or 200 in Michigan or Illinois to New Jersey with 100, North Carolina with 120. The average in the U.S. was 160 parts per million. Now, that doesn't necessarily tell the whole story because there can be some significant regional differences within the state. Take, for example, New Jersey. The average alkalinity is 100. Now, if you draw a line across the middle of the state, North of that, the alkalinity tends to be much higher. South of that, the alkalinity tends to be much lower. In fact, you'll find places in southern Jersey that have alkalinities of less than 20 parts per million. Long Island's another place where you'll find very, very low alkalinity. <coughs> places in Michigan, for example, can have much higher levels, 400 parts per million alkalinity. So there are regional differences. It's important to remember that when you're measuring alkalinity, what's important are the wells that you have inside your greenhouse, not anybody else's well. It's also important to remember that if you do have multiple wells, you need to test each one because each one can be different. Now, the way to remove alkalinity is through, one way to remove alkalinity is through acidification with a strong mineral acid. Typically, people will use phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid, or nitric acid. In this country, most growers originally started acidifying with phosphoric, but tended to move to sulfuric because of the runoff problems with phosphoric acid. In Canada, you'll find a lot of growers that use nitric acid. But generally speaking, most people in the U.S. use sulfuric. If you want to know exactly how much acid to add, to a given water source to remove alkalinity, there's a website at NC State that it's, it's an acidification uh, spreadsheet. And you can use that software, put in numbers, and they'll tell you exactly how much acid to add to remove a specific amount of alkalinity. Now, a lot of growers don't have the ability to know what their injector ratios are. Um, several injector types are very difficult to know what the exact ratio is. So they'll use pH to, as, a, as a gauge for how much alkalinity they have. And you can get a very rough estimate of how much alkalinity you have left when you're acidifying. Good rough estimate, if your pH is around 6.2, that generally means you have around 120 parts per million alkalinity. 5.8, around 80 parts per million alkalinity. 5.4, around 40 parts per million alkalinity. And four and a half is zero. Remember, going past, all you have to do is add a little bit more acid once you get down to, to 4.5, and the pH will drop dramatically. It's because you no longer have any buffering. So be careful if you're acidifying and you're getting close to that 4.5 pH. Now, if you're using pH as a rough, guess, rough guesstimate of alkalinity, Buy yourself an alkalinity test kit and make a chart to measure alkalinity versus measured pH for your specific water source. That will give you a much better idea at a given pH what alkalinity levels you actually have. 